Well, good morning, everyone, on this uh, beautiful Sunday after uh, morning. Um, today we are celebrating, as you could tell from the video before the worship started, uh, we are celebrating the 44th anniversary of First Lutheran Church being chartered as an official uh, congregation within the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and the Southeastern District. And a big part of that uh, uh, chartering were Ardeth and Jim Harley, um, as well as Al Plush. Um, Ardeth and Jim um, today celebrated their last official service with us and, uh, at, at the 8.30 service. And um, so we've been paying tribute to them, as well as all who have followed in faith before us for these past 46 years, actually, since uh, they first started worshiping in Al and Sally's living room. And so today we are celebrating the, the uh, chartering of First Lutheran, but we're also celebrating uh, the faithful life of Jim and Ardith Harley um, in this service. As we begin our service, uh, we remember that we are all baptized children of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us now take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son Jesus to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Built on the rock, the church shall stand, even when steeples are falling, crumbled half spires in every land, bell still are chiming and calling, calling the young and old to rest, built above all the souls distressed. Longing for rest everlasting. Here stands the font before our eyes, telling how God has received us. The altar recalls Christ's sacrifice and what his supper here gives us. Here sound the scriptures that proclaim Christ yesterday, today the same And evermore our Redeemer Grant then, O Lord, your will be done That when the church bells are ringing Many in saving faith may come where Christ his message is bringing. Why now, my own, my own, no me, you not the world my face shall see, my peace I leave with you.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord, that we may gain Christ and be found in him. Help us that we may know him and the power of his resurrection, and that we may share his sufferings and attain the resurrection of the dead, as you have promised us. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, everybody. I'm here at a local vineyard. These owners have put a lot of care into their vineyard. They planted the vines, they've nurtured them and cultivated them. They protected them. And now the fruit that's produced gathers people together and brings great joy. In the Bible, God compares his people to vines in a vineyard. God planted them and nurtured them and cultivated them, hoping that they would bear good fruit, the good works of righteousness. In the New Testament, Jesus tells a story, a parable, about a man who owned a vineyard. That man put a lot of work into his vineyard like the owners of this vineyard. He planted those vines and nurtured them. He cultivated them. He protected them. And he entrusted that vineyard to some tenants who he gave a chance to help that vineyard bear fruit so that when he returned, he would have a bountiful harvest. But when he sent his servants back, and even his own son to get the fruit from his vineyard, those tenants rejected them. Jesus told that story to the church leaders at the time and to us who read it now to help us realize that God has given us everything we need to bear fruit through Jesus our Savior. Jesus died on a cross to pay for our sins and rose again to conquer death so that we who believe might have faith and bear fruit, the good works of righteousness to glorify God. God wants that faith that he's planted in each of our hearts to grow and flourish, to bear fruit, the good works of righteousness that would glorify him and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control as our lives of faith in Jesus Christ bear fruit to God's glory others may be drawn together get to know Jesus as their Savior and have faith experience great joy and have eternal life the Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 5 beginning at verse 1 let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard my beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it, and he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O oh inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I look for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and I will, it will be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Yet he, again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come. Let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you ever read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken in pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 1976. For some of us that's just a year in a history book. But for some of us it's actually our history. We've lived through it. 1976. The year of the American Bicentennial. Rocky. The first one won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Gasoline had shot up 59 cents a gallon. And there was a Georgia peanut farmer who became the United States President. The first Ebola virus epidemic 
took shape in Africa, as well as a new disease called Legionnaires sprouted up in America. Then there were a couple of guys named Steve who started a little company out in California, named it after a fruit, an apple. And the VHS cassette recorder was invented. Oh, there was one other big thing that happened in 1976. There was a group of 20th century tenants tending the vineyard in a part of God's vineyard called Sunderland, Maryland. And they formally established First Lutheran Church of Calvert County. And for 44 years now, this congregation of God's people, planted at the intersection of routes two and four, has worked the vineyard and returned to him good fruit. And today, we are blessed and privileged to honor the work of all those tenants who've come before us over these last 44 years. And we do that by thanking and praising God for the work of two of them, Jim and Ardeth Harley, charter members along with their children, who faithfully responded to God's call to tend his vineyard in so many ways, through the music ministry, through our Little Lambs Preschool, by serving in leadership on many of our boards, by caring for human and spiritual care, by teaching, and, of course, through their worship. Jim and Ardeth are among the many who have gathered here in God's presence at First Lutheran Church to faithfully produce good fruit in its season for God and his kingdom. And today we give thanks to Jim and Ardeth for their faithful example as they move to a new part of God's vineyard in Washington, D.C. Listening to Jesus' parables of the vineyard, it's clear to, to see all who followed the lead of these charter members in the images Jesus chooses for the workers in those vineyards. We see those whose work has been, who've been called faithfully to work through the heat of the day. We've seen those who, though it may not have always been easy or convenient, have spoken loudly through their faithful actions, saying, Yes, Father, by doing His will. And today, Jesus tells the chief priests and the temple leaders in our gospel, Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are those people that God has chosen and given his vineyard to. And he has given us all that goes with it. Our time, our talent, our treasure, and his word, which guides us in the use of these gifts our Father has given us so that we can produce the fruit that he longs for. However, as we receive these gifts from God to use, we can at times forget that, like the tenets in the, vineyard, in the parable Jesus tells, we can forget that the gifts aren't necessarily ours. These gifts are actually God's. You see, tenants don't own the vineyard, let alone the produce the vineyard makes. It's the master of the house who owns it all. The tenants are only there because of the generosity of the master, giving them all that he has. And in exchange, he simply asks for a portion to come back to him. However, as the crop comes in, we see that those tenants have forgotten whose crop it really is. 
It's like the story of a harried businessman. He sits, decides he's going to take a break in the middle of the day, go to the coffee shop and grab a little pick-me-up. Well, after setting his computer down to save his table, he goes up to the counter, orders his pumpkin spice latte grande style, and picks up five of those double chocolate fudge brownies. He hurriedly gathers all his things up and goes back to his table, only to find that his space has been invaded by a mom and her little kid sitting in a baby stroller. A bit annoyed at the intrusion, the man fires up his laptop, tries to ignore the intruders as he savors his PSL. Well, his eyes are fixed to the screen, and he reaches blindly to grab one of his brownies, and he feels a hand there. It's the hand of the mom. How rude, he thinks to himself, as he snatches up one of the brownies and gobbles it down. Having inhaled the brownie without even tasting it, he reaches out to grab another. And what does he feel? The hand again. Oh, the nerve of some people. As he tries to refocus on his work, he eyes the last brownie on the table. Well, the woman must have realized there was only one brownie left because she reached out for it, broke it in half, gave half to the man while she finished the other half smiled kindly and made her way to the door. What in the world? The man thought angrily. Well, so much for my pick-me-up and my little time out. He threw away the rest of his latte, slammed his computer shut, and then tried to stuff it into his computer bag as it met resistance, and he realized why. In his computer bag were his brownies. In that instant, he was horrified. He realized that he had been helping himself to the mom's brownies. He ate half of her brownies, maybe even one of those brownies intended for her child. He took from a mom who willingly gave them up, even smiling kindly as she left. Are we ever like this harried businessman or the tenants in Jesus' parable, forgetting where our things actually come from? How often do we proudly say, look at what I have achieved. Look at all the stuff that I have acquired, while forgetting that the source of all of our time, all of our talent, all of our treasure even. In times like now, in times when this hurricane of uncertainty is swirling all around us, social turmoil, political unrest, pandemics, and economic upheaval, Satan lays before us temptations the temptations of self-preservation, self-defense, self-protection. He blinds us with uncertainty, ambition, and greed. He leads us to think that we need to keep all that we have to preserve ourselves. In these times, we can forget whose stuff this all truly is. And we can forget the purposes for which he has given it to us. God tells us through his prophets, through the apostles, and through his son Jesus, that he will care for all of our needs. So don't worry about it. Jesus says, do not be anxious. Your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God 
and His righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. Our Father in heaven gives us all that we have. It's ours to use. But it's not ours to keep. The tenants had forgotten the master's generous provision, which enabled them to provide for all of their needs. The master didn't send his servants into the vineyard to take everything from them. The master simply wanted a portion of the fruit in return for all that he had given them. Yet the tenants weren't happy with their deal. No, they wanted all of it. They wanted every last grape, and so they beat and killed the servants. And when they saw the sun come, their blind ambition and their greed stepped in. And they said, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. With these words, Jesus prophesied about what was going to happen to him in a mere three days. God sent his son Jesus into the vineyard to collect the fruits that the chief priests and the elders were supposed to be producing in response to his father's love. The fruits of repentance for their idolatry of self. The fruits of faith and trust that God would provide and continue to provide for all of their needs. The fruits of faithful worship and praise to God for all that he has given them and promises to continue to give to them. But they wanted nothing to do with God. Rather, they selfishly hoarded all that he had given them for themselves. Rejecting Jesus, they threw him outside the city gates, and they killed him on a Roman cross. And thinking him finally dead, they rejoiced. The vineyard is now ours. However, much to their surprise, their own words, spoken to Jesus just a couple days before, came true. He has put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. The Father gives all who believe in Him and His Son, Jesus, His vineyard, and all that they'll ever need to bring Him the fruits that He desires, all the while knowing that He will continue to provide for all of their needs. In 1976, God's people the founding members of First Lutheran followed him in faith. Recognizing all they had was actually God's, they boldly committed to extending the vineyard to reach the masses of Calvert County with the truth of God's word. Faithfully using God's gifts, new vines took root in 1974, planted in the vineyard of Al and Sally Plush's living room. And then two years later, they grew and eventually were planted at the intersection of Route 2 and Route 4. And the cross of Christ has shone brightly for almost 50 years now through the actions of God's people gathered into His presence here at First Lutheran Church. My brothers and sisters, it has never been easy over those years. 
There have always been challenges for us. But through it all, through it all, God our Father has always provided for His people's needs as they have sacrificed to joyfully proclaim God's Word and enthusiastically share Christ's love throughout Southern Maryland. And today, the legacy, established in part by Jim and Ardeth, continues to grow. As we follow him in faith, through the uncertainty that lies before us in this day, we confidently trust that God will continue to produce the fruits that he desires, to grow his kingdom as we await that glorious day when Jesus returns to join us all together in the eternal kingdom of heaven, the new creation. And until then, may we all live in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ as it uplifts our spirit and uplifts our souls. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, creator of the universe and planter of vineyards, let us be righteous tenants of the fertile ground you have planted, that we might cultivate it in your garden truth as a great tree, strong and unyielding, weathering all storms, lending us shade from the sweltering heat of the devil's lies and the false churches and worldviews he has spawned throughout time. Bless our brothers and sisters persecuted by evil men, that their hope in your salvation would not be vanquished, but renewed by the gospel as in our church by your pastor, servant, Pastor Jim. Father, we pray for a return to civility in this country and an end to violence. Heal the wounds of division and lead people to forsake their bankrupt worldview of materialism, which leads to hopelessness and a misunderstanding of the nature of man. Where you have planted a fine vineyard in this nation, it has been corrupted by the lies of evil men. Where there should be justice, behold bloodshed, and righteousness, behold an outcry. Restore fear of you, O God, and the saving power of the gospel that our fellow citizens will forsake the empty ways of this world, laying down their rioting implements and their hateful intentions, exchanging them for tools to rebuild our towns and our relationships. We pray for our first responders, that you would watch their coming and going and lift up our leaders, that they would calm the tensions, but hold criminals liable for their misdeeds, returning us to peace. We lift up President Donald and Governor Lawrence, that they heed the counsel of your Holy Spirit, doing what is right for this state and for this country. Great physician, we pray for all doctors, nurses, and medical professionals during this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We lift up all those with cancer, give them strength to endure their treatment. Grant healing for all recovering from surgery. We pray for all who are sick with COVID-19, especially President Donald. We lift up the suffering, the lonely, the homeless, and the hungry. Heal them, Lord, according to your good and perfect will. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Having worshipped God with music, with prayer, with his word, we also worship him with our tithes and offerings, giving back a portion of that which he has already given to us. Uh, we can worship him in this way through online giving uh, at the website on the screen. You can also uh, bring your offering by the church or drop it in the mail, uh, mailing it to us. Um, however you uh, choose to worship in this way, um, God our Father appreciates and we truly appreciate all you do to continue to support the work in the vineyard here at First Lutheran Church. Let us now give thanks to God for all that he has given to us. Let the vineyard be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. As always, it is our privilege to pray for you and with you. Uh, so I'd invite you to continue to make your requests known as we add them to our prayer list. Um, there is much to pray for and uh, to give both uh, thanks and praise, but also to, to ask God for his assistance in our world. And uh, please let us know if there are any um, uh, needs that have been taken care of that we can may give thanks and praise to him also. As we are called to participate in God's mission in the vineyard, 
Um, there are many ways that we can do that. I would urge you to take a look at the first notes that uh, went out this week um, for those opportunities. One opportunity that uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to offer up to you is uh, Food for the Poor. It's a, a, an organization that helps support uh, those in Central and South America who are uh, obviously poor um, by giving them not just money, but giving them resources by which they can then take care of themselves. And it's one of Jim and Artis' um, favorite uh, charities. And so we are making a donation in their memory to the Food for the Poor. Um, and if you would like to contribute to that, uh, that gift to Jim and Artis, please do so um, by writing a check, uh, sending it to the church. Um, we'll put it into a special fund, and at the end of October, uh, we will uh, then make a donation to Food for the Poor in Jim and Artist's name uh, in memory of their 46 years of service to God and his people here at First Lutheran. Uh, earlier today, we also gave, uh, had a blessing for Jim and Artith as they uh, went on their way, and I'd like to share that with you right now. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jim and Ardeth have served our Lord faithfully here at First Lutheran Church for 40, over 46 years as charter members, as leaders on boards, as teachers in classrooms, as choir members and worship assistants, as spiritual and human caregivers, and so much more. Hear what the Holy Scriptures has to say about those who serve the church. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you direct your people to use their gifts and service to others. Receive our thanks and praise for the faithful service of Jim and Ardeth. As they move to a new place in your vineyard, Bless them with wisdom and patience, with love and faithfulness to your word, that they may continue to serve you and your people with gladness. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We won't leave you empty-handed. Uh, we have a couple things that we'd like to, to give to you all. Uh, first, uh, we're going to give you this little plaque. It doesn't take up much room. Hopefully, it'll fit somewhere in your little apartment. Uh, Bill Johnson made this. Um, the brick is from the, uh, the, the new sign. Uh, Bill was able to carve a piece of the brick, so you're taking a piece of First Lutheran along with you. Um, Jim and Ardeth Harley, Christ's living stones, following him in faith from, should say, from 1994. Uh, 1974 to 2020 with love from First Lutheran Church. So I'm going to have to give this to you and then probably take it back because I can need to get a new plaque made for it. But uh, we just wanted to give you this small token to remember us by um, and have take a little piece of First Lutheran with you. Um, also, the congregation is taking up a collection in your name um, and we will be making a donation to Food for the Poor um, in your name. For, with that collection, so uh, we'll let you know what, uh, what kind of beast you may have purchased for a village somewhere. But uh, we want to thank you so much for, for everything you've done for us um, all these years. And let us close with a prayer. Jim and Ardeth, go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. May the almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you all of your days. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.
As we go out into the vineyard, we go with God's blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. As we go into the world, let us joyfully proclaim God's word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen. We have about uh, 10 minutes or so of fellowship time before we begin our adult Bible study at 1115. Please join us if you can for our last installment of Households of Faith. Uh, next week we will start a new study um, again beginning at 1115. Please join us when you can.